We have uh, Carrie Severino on with us. She is the president of Judicial Crisis, uh, and we wanted to talk to her. And I guess, I guess, Carrie, the first question is, do we have enough time to confirm a SCOTUS replacement before the election? Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. You look at like Justice O'Connor, she was confirmed 33 days after her nomination was submitted, and uh, she was unanimously confirmed. You have Justice Ginsburg herself, 42 days, again, almost unanimously, and uh, Justice Stevens, 19 days. Now, that was, you know, that was, you know, a couple decades ago, but we can we can totally do it. And what's interesting is all of these women that the president is looking at, they have been recently confirmed by the Senate, and I think all with bipartisan majorities. So the Senate has seen them recently. Their information, like their background file from the FBI, all is pr- almost up to date already. I think there's not a lot standing in the way of moving forward. We, we already know, you know, even the senators are familiar with all of these not potential nominees already. Okay, so um, he said he had a list of, the, of five, but three of them we know. Are you familiar with those three female judges? Yes. Yeah, the three that we hear a lot about um, are Amy Coney Barrett. Obviously, everyone remembers her dogma lives loudly within you moment with Senator Feinstein last year, those anti-Catholic attacks that went on. She held her own with grace under pressure. She's the mother of seven, including two children who were adopted from Haiti. Just a really inspiring story in her life. Barbara Lagoa, who uh, has spent over a decade in the Florida state courts, now is on the 11th Circuit, thanks to Donald Trump. She is the daughter of Cuban immigrants um, who really speaks eloquently about her own parents' uh, desire to come here because they wanted their children to grow up in a nation of laws, not a tyrannical government. And so she's very committed to making sure that the role of a judge is to just interpret the law, not make it up. Yeah. And then Allison Rushing is someone else the president mentioned. She's a Fourth Circuit nominee. Um, she is someone who has a distinguished legal career. She clerked for Justice Thomas like I did. She also came under fire like Barrett during her confirmation process because she'd been involved in the group Alliance Defending Freedom, which stands for religious freedom and things like that. So she understands also what it's like to be attacked for your faith. So the one that, I mean, let's just play politics here for a second, then I'll quickly switch to Constitution. But the one who makes sense, I think, on both sides, politically and also uh, with the Constitution, is uh, Barbara Lagoa. I mean, the background of her being Cuban, she's from Florida, Cuban, and then uh, more importantly, being the first American generation, I think those people get it much more than anybody else. And I think that that's a strong vote for her on sticking to the Constitution. Would you agree or all three of them that way? Who's the best on holding to the Constitution, do you think? You know, the great thing about these these final shortlisters that we're, we're hearing about is, honestly, I think all of them would be outstanding. I could put my seal of approval on all of them in terms of what I've seen of their record on the court. So that's really encouraging. Yeah, they, they all have slightly different stories, but I think all have inspiring stories. And it's, it's interesting. I, they're going to all, uh, thankfully, very much diverge from where Justice Ginsburg would be in terms of her jurisprudence, right? But I do think they carry on that same tradition of being strong women, you know, being path-breaking in many ways, um, you know, in particular, when you think of Barrett, you know, doing all this with seven kids, how many how many mothers of seven do you know who are that accomplished in their mm-hmm, field mm-hmm. and have, have risen that far? Um, Lagoa, obviously, with her uh, her inspiring story of, of coming here and, and, and being the first generation. Of her. So it, it's these are these are people who can really fit into that um, that legacy nicely in terms of all of the best things I think about Justice Ginsburg of of her uh, her strength and her courage. Do you um do you see any of these fitting a Scalia or a Thomas kind of standard? Oh, that's that's the reason they're on the list, right? I mean, you've got people like Barrett, who was a Scalia clerk, and I've heard one of his favorite clerks. Uh, right. Rushing was a Thomas clerk, um, and and uh, Lagoa didn't clerk for either one of them. But I, I love that there was a meme that went around right after she was nominated that said Lagoa it's Spanish for Clarence Thomas, um, mm. and that and that's really how I think a lot of the conservative movement in in uh, Florida views her. I don't think she has as much you know, known as much nationally. But so I think all of them, that's the reason they're picked, is this approach to the law where you look first and foremost at what the text says. It's not what I wish it said. It's not what I think in 2020 we should update it to say. It's what did our elected representatives pass? What does the Constitution itself actually say? And then, you know, let the chips fall where they may. And if, if it's not the result you want, 
go back to Congress and fix it. So you were just concerned. I think all Americans are just concerned that we would have another Roberts pick that. Oh, yes. You know, that's been (laughs) devastating, devastating. Well, that's why I think what you're seeing, and and this is something that all of Trump's list was really chosen with Roberts in mind. When when, uh, Molly Hemming and I were working on a book on the Kavanaugh nomination, Justice on Trial, we learned that part of his vetting process was trying to find like the anti-Roberts, someone who they thought Mm. would be strong in the face of pressure. That's why it's so exciting to see people, for example, you know, like like the, the, the Barrett or the Russian who got pressure during their confirmation process and nonetheless stood up to it. You know, Lagoa has had she already on the 11th Circuit has had people trying to, to launch politically motivated recusal campaigns. And she stood firm. She's like, no, I don't have to recuse in this case. This is an important case. I, I, I'm going to sit on it. So you have to have someone who has illustrated in their career that they've got that spine. And what's exciting is all these women uh, have shown they have spines. Uh, That's what we want. But but Lego is the only one that hasn't been already in front of of uh, a hearing, right? Oh no, she she was just recently confirmed to the 11th Circuit okay. by the Senate. So so all three of them have been confirmed by this Senate, well, or this this or the previous Senate, but in, 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 within the Trump administration. So again, all of their, you know, their, their vetting has been recently updated. They have been, um, they, they've gone through that kind of harrowing process once recently. So I feel like, you know, we, we have, we're talking about people, all of whom are ready. Um, well, if you can ever be ready for what we expect is coming, because we know that, you know, the Kavanaugh nomination was crazy. I don't know how you make it crazier, but I know that there's Democrats right now having brainstorming sessions trying to figure out. I mean, but you're a little boy that cried wolf. I mean, y- you you do that a second time. I think that galvanized uh, the country. A lot of people changed mm-hmm. their view of what was going on in the Democratic Party because of that. And to have that kind of an outrageous scene again, I think would be devastating to the Democrats. Yeah, I, I know. I think you're exactly right. They totally overstepped. And I think it really hurt them. Yet somehow, you know, when you look at all the stuff going on, they don't seem to have gotten that message. There's, I, I think no. that the, the radical edge of the party is, um, you know, is, is going crazy, and they're like kind of setting themselves on fire, sometimes literally, in ways that I don't think is what most Americans, and certainly not independents, and you know, the moderate wing wing of the Democratic Party wants to see. So, you know, have at it, over overstep again. Let's see how that works for you. Is there anything in their records that th- that has been drug out that? Uh, could be expanded. As you, have you seen anything that is bad, or not bad, but just like, oh, geez, that's there. Uh, and they had to explain it, but it could be made up into something bigger. Have you seen any trouble or weak spots in any of these people? Well, there's certainly stuff in their records that's going to get controversy, but I think generally it's controversy for all the right reasons. <laughs> you know, it's going yeah. to get stuff, people going, oh, my gosh, how could you have you know, there's there's cases where they've all ruled and someone's going to go, well, that's a really sympathetic plaintiff. And their answer, which is the right answer, would be, you know what, that's what the law said. And I don't write the law. That's not my job as a judge. Yeah. So so what I what I have seen is, you're, of course, you're going to get controversy. But I think it's going to be the right kind of controversy on these nominees that we're looking at. And that's that's really excited. Now, they have none of them has had case in every single area of law. No one has. Um, but I think we have a lot of really, you know, these are all people with with records that we can look at. And that's what that's what it has to come down to is you look at the objective record that they have um, so you can see how they really perform on the bench. Is there anything that the Democrats can do, seeing that the Senate is controlled by the Republicans and a lot of weenie Republicans? But is there anything that the Senate can do, uh, the Democrats can do to stop this dead in its tracks? Is there any any trick you know, in the parliamentary rules to be able to stop this? Or can can Mitch McConnell, if he can keep his crowd together, proceed? I think if he's got 50 votes, he can do it because we got we got the vice president and, and I hope he gets more than 50 votes. But, um, you know, obviously, I, I'm, I am not a Senate rules expert. That stuff is crazy. It's really yeah, involved. Yeah. I'm sure they're out there brainstorming again, yeah. trying to find some hole. But if they could do it for Kavanaugh, I don't think they're going to be able to find it now. And, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll see we'll see crazy stuff going on, like where they 
you remember what, even during the first Kavanaugh hearing where they tried to just talk over Chairman Grassley yeah, over yeah, yeah. an hour to get through a yeah. 10 minute opening, stuff like that, you know, made for TV little moments. Right. But I don't think they actually um, at the end of the day are going to have the vote. And uh, last question, um, as they uh, as they go through and you're looking and saying, you know, they need to have 50, we're going to lose Romney, which would bring us to 50. Uh, we've got the two uh, the, the two that have already said they're not on board. Uh, and then if you lose Romney, you're at 50. Is there anybody else that you're concerned that might go? Or do you watch any of that stuff? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to keep track. And I know there's people who they don't want to have a vote now or, or whatever. I do think it's going to be hard when you are looking at one of these women in the face and you see the outside standing role models that they are, the path-breaking careers that they've led, I think it's going to be hard to come to a point and say, yeah, I'm going to, I, I don't think this person deserves a vote. So, you know, we'll see. I think Leader McConnell knows better than anyone where his votes are, and he's going to be in charge of how to, how to navigate this through the Senate. He did it for Gorsuch. He did it for Kavanaugh. Those are really controversial. I'm confident he can do that again. That's great. Well, you, I feel so much better talking to you. Uh, let's please stay in touch <laughs> because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to stay uh, in a happy mood, and I think America needs to. Uh, Carrie, thank you very much for your analysis. Appreciate uh, it. Have a great day. 